Okay, so we're going to start by analyzing a part of the I have a dream tree. <coughs> we'll start with the tone. Um, the tone from this part is actually, uh, he, he really uh, talks about a, a dedication towards the cause they're talking about. So what basically happens is he uh, tries to accomplish something by being uh, by talking slowly and nice but he really wants to activate people so that's why we also put in activating and motivating because he really wants to motivate all the people that are listening to take action and he wants to unite them and you can see that in line 38 and line 39 which are we cannot walk alone as we walk we must uh, must make a pledge that we shall always march ahead we cannot turn back uh, this really means that, that they need to do it together. So what King is trying to say is we need to uh, make a change together. If somebody does it alone, it, it will not work. He's very determined in that part, uh, which, which causes the unity, because everybody gets so motivated by his speech that they're united and they, did, they are determined to do something. You can see that in line 27 and 28. Those are... There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. So he says that they will not stop uh, activating and be united and dedicated to the cause until the Negroes will have equal citizenship rights. You can, you can put this back in, um, you can see this in the theme as well, because the theme is about freedom, which refers back to the citizenship rights. But what he's trying to do, he's trying to uh, accomplish this in a non-violent way. He tries to um, help, uh, he tries to use love, actually, to get people to be motivated to do something. You can also see that in line 33 to 34, which are... Um, we must not allow creative process to degenerate into physical fire. What he basically yeah. says there is that um, we can be motivated and we can actually take something on, but we need to do it in a non-violent way, because if we use a violent way, it will not happen and it will not be right. The other um, line, it also says something like that is 31, which basically says we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. He says again, that we uh, should not use violence to uh, get to our cause. And you can see that in the tone. He's really uh, being dedicated, but he's doing that in a non-violent way. He's also talking about uh, progressive thinking. Uh, that's online 38 and 39. And there he, there he also says again, we cannot walk alone as we walk, we must make a pledge that we shall always march ahead, we cannot turn back. Um, he says we march ahead, we make progress, but in a non-violent way we make a progress. Uh, that can be referred back to the content as well, because the to content is also talking about freedom and the non-violence. In the freedom he says that the segregation is not right because the Negroes are still not free, and he wants to change that. And he, uh, he wants people to realize that they should not tolerate something like this. He says we need to take action, and that's where the progressive thinking part comes in. And um, they get to the stylistic devices, and those stylistic devices actually uh, help, you, help uh, the speech get more strength. And uh, Sylvia will say something about that. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to make a, a quick link to the structure and the stylistic devices because um, in the stylistic devices um, there are, in this extract, there are four uh, repetitions. Um, and these four repetitions basically sum up um, the content of this part of the speech. Um, repetition one is 100 years later. Repetition two is we refuse. Then repetition three, um, now is the time, and repetition four, uh, we must not. Um, and basically, um, uh, this explains the content, as in um, 100 years later in America, um, there is still segregation, Negroes are still being treated very badly. 
we refuse to accept this, now is the time to take action and uh, we must not uh, be guilty of uh, violence. Um, there are a couple of personifications in this extract, for example in uh, line 3. Uh, there he says, in the flames of withering injustice. Then there's another personification in line uh, 28 and 29. In the whirlwinds of our nation. Next page, please. Um, then there are a few metaphors. He makes a lot of financial references. Uh, for example, in line 9 he says cash, cash check. Line 10, he says, a uh, promissory uh, note. In line 12, he says, uh, note, uh, note was a promise. <laughs> in line, promise. line 13, devoted on this uh, promissory. Yeah. Um, he made the financial references. Um, because it says something about um, how it's changing. Because when you talk about the banks, you, uh, you you cash a check, so you do something, you get something back. What I think he's basically trying to say: we need to do something, we need to fill in something, we need to give it to all the other people, so we can get something back, which is our freedom. Uh, let me think. Um, So what he basically says, um, there is a part in line 14 where he says, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back to marked with insufficient funds. What he says is that the Negroes are not being treated right, are not being treated equal, I guess, because they got a bad check. And this reference uh, makes people really understand what he's trying to say because it, he draws it more towards their own lives. Okay, um, then he makes another metaphor. Um, he basically compares the situation in America to an island in the ocean. For example, in line, in line uh, 21 he says, the dark and um, desolate valley of segregation. And in line 23 he says, the quick sense of racial in injustice. Um, and what he ba uh, in line six he says, uh, yeah, the vast ocean of material prosperity. Well, what he basically does here, here is compare this uh, the situation to a uh, deserted island. Um, you can see this as in the Negroes are basically um, on an island in the ocean, and the ocean around it um, <coughs> is filled with the wealthy. Uh, white Americans and they're basically trapped, they can't go anywhere on the, uh, off the island. Um, then um, there's another metaphor uh, in line 30, um, there he says, but there is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice. Um, well, the Palace of Justice, uh, he says that the Negroes are standing on, uh, on the warm threshold. And what he basically is trying to say with this is that they're almost there. So they're on their way to, um, to, to enter this Palace of Justice. So to uh, change the situation and to live in a place where there's justice also for uh, Negro people. Um, then he says in line 31, um, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Um, we, uh, let, let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. Uh, what he means by this is that they must not participate in the violence. They must keep loving uh, the white people that actually are, are violating them. Um, that's it. Would you give a conclusion? 
You need a structure for it. Yeah, conclusion. So as you can see, there are a lot of stylistic <coughs> devices that he uses, uh, such as metaphors, to create um, a more clear idea of what he's, uh, what he's saying, because he uses the bank to uh, uh, track it more to people, so they'll know what he's talking about. The same thing goes for the Palace of Justice, because they all know when you're standing on the warm threshold, you're almost there. You can uh, refer that back to the structure, because in the structure you can almost see uh, a path he has throughout his whole uh, speech, by the way. And those refer back to the repetition, so the 100 years later, the we refuse, and the now is the time, and lastly, we must know. You can see the theme and the tone will come back in those, because he's trying to structure um, his speech by giving uh, in this part, four important parts which say something people really need to understand, people really need to get, because this is the most important part of the speech. And he uses the really well, because it's basically saying, well, one, 100 years later, so 100 years back, they still, the Negroes still weren't free, and they're not free now, and that needs to change. He says, we refuse to accept that. We refuse to um, still have segregation. We need to change it. Now is the time to do something. Now is the time to change something. He also says, in the end, we must not. And he says with the we must not, we must not use violence. We must not do this in the wrong way. Because the white people are also still people, and we cannot judge them for it. So what he basically says is that they need to take action, because 100 years ago, it was still the same as it is now. and he. He and all the others refuse to accept that. But he also says, really loudly, we must not use violence. And that's the whole structure he gets in this part. And that's basically the most important thing he says about everything, because that's the part in which he gets the people activated, in which he gets the people dedicated, in which he gets people uniting. And he, you can also see the freedom and the non-violence from the themes that come back, and the content where he talks about the segregation and where he refused to tolerate this. And the stylistic devices only help him to create uh, this really uh, strong part which really motivates and dedicate, gets the people dedicated to the cause. This is basically what he says throughout his whole speech, but when you look at this part, you can see it really clearly because of that, this structure and this stylistic devices.